Good evening. It is around 7 o'clock on Thursday, March 18th. Time for a new monthly meetup from Blockchain Lab Drenthe. I saw a lot of new names registering for this live stream, so I will start with a short introduction. I'm Adrie Wisman, a co-founder of Blockchain Lab Drenthe, which is a non-profit foundation with the goal to share knowledge, experience and insights about blockchain and distributed ledgers in general. We try to help entrepreneurs, students, schools, private persons who want to get involved with this relatively new technology. We are heavily involved in Interreg Project Bling, which stands for Blockchain in Government. This is a project where 13 partners from six North Sea region countries cooperate in implementing blockchain for public services. But first, a small service announcement. All of you know YouTube, otherwise you would not have been here to watch. 
but not all of you know the YouTube chat. We use this for a chat function to ask questions to our speakers. So please log in with your Gmail account because YouTube is a Google company and communicate with us. Uh, let us know who you are, where you're from and questions and remarks. After this live stream, we will do an informal video call through Yitzi where you can also ask some questions. So join us. I will show this URL also at the end of the meeting. We have the following agenda for this meetup. I am going to start with the general news about what's going on in the blockchain space. Then Ali Amin Reze is going to present their architecture for their project where they are storing health credentials on the Tangle with IOTA. After that, Danny Dreyfus is going to talk about developing with IOTA and our self-sovereign attendancy application. In between topics, there will be room for questions and answers. So without further ado, let's start our first segment. What's going on in the blockchain space? And of course, we'll start our first general segment with Bitcoin, as we nearly always do. Um, on this sheet, you can see that Bitcoin has gone up for about 13% uh, since our last meetup, which is pretty amazing, right? Uh, this is a return on investment where investors have been dreaming about. Uh, of course, it's less than the month before, which was 35% or uh, even months before that, it was even more. Um, but 13% is still a, a very nice figure. And this is also uh, the, the reason why uh, lots and lots of people are suddenly interested in cryptocurrencies. As you can see uh, on this uh, slide also, um, the, the market cap has been uh, going up considerably. Uh, we've been doubling since January. So there is a lot of inflow of money. And in January, the market cap was just under 1 trillion. And now the market cap, as you can see, is 1.8 trillion. So it doubled. Uh, which is absolutely amazing. Well, uh, here you can see what the reason is in this chart. You can see that about one year ago on March 13th of 2020, Bitcoin was at uh, under 5,000, 4,900 and something. And as you know, uh, now at least we are 11 times, maybe uh, 12 times that price, which is incredible. But it's not all good news. Uh, the, the fact that the, the prices have gone up and not all prices have gone up, huh, right? This is the last month of Ethereum, which is around the same price. Uh, the, the fact that uh, prices have gone up has also uh, had an effect on transaction fees. Uh, in this chart, you can see that a year ago, the transaction fees in Ethereum were eight, nine cents. In Bitcoin, you paid 40 cents on transaction fee. Nowadays, you can see that the, on Ethereum, you pay 21, 22 US dollars. And in Bitcoin, you, you pay $20 for one transaction. Uh, I've mentioned this before. Uh, uh, these crypto coins uh, uh, are aiming to uh, make, it, uh, make a very low threshold so everybody will use them, will start to use them uh, in their daily life. But if you uh, want to pay a cup of coffee uh, in a restaurant and you have to pay uh, 20 or 21 US dollars on transaction fee, that is not going to happen. So uh, this is uh, a thing which is really getting in the way of adoption. And that's why there uh, is going to be some changes. Uh, last year, March, um, Mr. Uh, uh, <laughs> Vitalik, uh, the, the Mr. Ethereum uh, did a proposal. Uh, it's an Ethereum improvement uh, proposal, the EIP-1559. And they are going to implement that in uh, uh, July. Uh, uh, that means that uh, the transaction fees that have gone up at this moment, right? Everybody who wants a, a fast um, uh, transaction verification uh, puts in a, a, a little bit higher transaction amount transaction fee, sorry, and uh, this has uh, been leading up to these 20, 22 US dollars. Now, um, he made a proposal where that transaction fee is capped off. And uh, what does he propose? The transaction fee from uh, July 
will be in a certain bandwidth, upper and lower bandwidth, uh, and not going outside that. The, the miners will not get the total fee, the miners will only get a small portion of that. The rest of that money, if the prices increase up to the maximum, the rest of that ethers will be burned. And I hear you saying, well, how can I uh, burn uh, virtual money? It will be sent to an address uh, where nobody has the private key, so it cannot be used in the future anymore. Um, of course, you can imagine that the miners are not happy with that, right? They want to take that money and put it in their own pocket. Um, if you look at a Bitcoin block, which has about two, two and a half thousand transactions with an average transaction fee of 20 US dollars, that is 50,000 US dollars of transaction fee they could take out of the market. Now, uh, in Ethereum, that would be even more uh, because they have other kind of blocks. And the, so uh, Vitalik has uh, put in a proposal to change that. And this has large implications. Uh, the miners are um, reacting and they are a bit angry and they are proposing to uh, have um, um, a day, the, the, the 1st of April, where they are going to protest. At that day, they propose to uh, use their mining facilities for a different coin. So there will be less miners uh, mining Ethereum for, I believe, 51 hours. So um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, that, that's one of the problems you have when you have uh, users and miners, which could have conflicts of interest. Um, it's not all bad news, right? Because when you start burning off Ethereum, right? Uh, in a rate that is even higher than it can be mined by uh, the, the block reward for uh, miners, then um, the number of coins is not increasing, but decreasing, right? Everybody is talking about that uh, the, the number of, for instance, Bitcoins is maximum 21 million, right? In Ethereum, we don't have a maximum like that. Uh, it, it's not ending, they're halving, etc. No, it starts, but it stays growing. But if you burn faster than you mint these ethers, then the number of uh, ether coins is decreasing and going up in value. So it is deflationary. So another reason why uh, ethers could be going up in price, uh, not only when we go into a, a proof of uh, a stake with Ethereum 2.0, but also because of this burn of ethers. Um, two monthly meetups ago, we had here Haro Boven from uh, the Dutch uh, Central Bank talking about the digital euro. Um, we talked about it that China is uh, uh, developing the digital yuan and they are stepping up their efforts. Uh, they are doing uh, large tests in Shanghai, uh, in, in large uh, uh, retail shops, in department stores. And what they did is they gave out free money to shoppers. And if they would use those digital yuan coins, they could buy anything they want. Uh, so uh, they would give out coupons and do a large test and it was uh, very successful. Uh, so while in Europe we're still talking amongst ourselves, are we going to do this? China is uh, uh, steaming full ahead and already testing and, and uh, improving and um, making applications for the digital yuan. Uh, this is a fact that you uh, must have seen also. Uh, NFT auction, and uh, in this case, uh, not a, a, a certain uh, NFT, Beeple, uh, uh, this man that, where you see the photo on the screen, uh, is an artist, a digital artist, and he's been selling, auctioning off his work. And uh, the, the work you see here. This is a, a, an artwork where he started in 2007 to make a digital piece of art every day. And for these years and years, 
he made these separate pieces of art and depending on uh, what's going on in the world and uh, which tools he had on his desk and now he gathered 5,000 of these digital art uh, pieces into one big art piece and he auctioned it off at Christie's as you probably have heard it got nearly 70 million US dollars um, he was a very happy man uh, and it sparked off a, a, a big wave for digital art and, and selling it and on the blockchain. So um, this was a first uh, uh, that Christie's uh, auctioned off some digital uh, item and it was in ethers. Uh, so uh, that was a first also. And um, uh, two minutes before closing the auction, uh, the counter was still at um, uh, a respectable 25 million. So when it closed a few minutes later at nearly 70 million, uh, you can imagine his reaction uh, on the website of Christie's. You can uh, see a, a small uh, short movie uh, about him and his family sitting in his living room looking at the auction. Um, other news, uh, as you know it, we have been developing with IOTA uh, in, in uh, our uh, blockchain lab and IOTA has announced they will uh, switch over to uh, a version 1.0. We're going from IOTA 1.0 to 1.5, which is called Chrysalis. Uh, th this is a big event because uh, the old Tango uh, is, is not, uh, does not suffice anymore and they will switch over to a new protocol. So everybody has a week or something uh, to switch their coins over from the old Tango to the new Tango from an old wallet, uh, uh, Trinity, to a new wallet, Firefly, uh, which you see on the screen there, the, the, the Firefly wallet will be able to, the, to do that automatically for you. Uh, but it also has implications for all kinds of libraries. So uh, we were watching that very closely um, and, and developing already for the, the new part. Uh, then we come to our uh, segment, Scams. Uh, uh, we don't like scams, but we like to warn people for scams. So uh, that is one of the, the topics we always uh, uh, mention in our uh, monthly meetups. This person, you, you probably will have seen him before, Mr. McAfee. Uh, yes, the guy from uh, the, the virus scanning software. Um, uh, the, the company is, uh, has been sold long, long ago, but he is some kind of an eccentric millionaire um uh, a libertarian and uh, he has been uh, caught in spain and uh, he sits in jail uh, and he's been accused of um, front running uh, manipulating the price of some cryptos he tweeted about uh, some coins and so people started buying and he sold them and made about 13 million and now he's before a court uh, here is a scam which is a, a little bit uh, um, related. Uh, that's something you probably will have seen uh, also. Uh, um, scams where uh, prominent people, in this case, uh, you see the face of Elon Musk, um, go on social media or, or a website and are announcing a big giveaway. Uh, I wanna give something back to the people. Um, I'll double every Bitcoin or every Ether you send me uh, send me one, I'll uh, send you two back. Uh, I'm a philanthropist and I will help you. Of course, this is a scam, right? Th there is no free money. So uh, um, this guy from Germany, uh, he lives in the neighborhood of Cologne. Uh, he said uh, in front of a screen, saw uh, a beautiful page describing this giveaway. Uh, he checked. Uh, if the logo was Tesla's, yes, yes. And the face is uh, Elon's, yes, yes. I will send him all my Bitcoins, uh, 10 Bitcoins, and he will send me back 20 and I will make a lot of money in a very short amount of time. Well, um, there is a, 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 a complete chapter, a, a complete read up of this story on the, uh, the website of BBC. Uh, where he sees the counter counting down and of course nothing's coming back. 
um, then he realizes I just sent someone 10 bitcoins uh, and I will never see it back. And he went upstairs and told his wife, who was not very happy about it either. Um, this was all uh, monitored. Uh, there are large companies in the world, one of them in Amsterdam, uh, Whale Alert, uh, monitored by these companies where the, they see these giveaways and they monitor the, the, the uh, crypto accounts uh, connected to these giveaways. Uh, and they saw this uh, uh, Sebastian uh, uh, and his 10 Bitcoins uh, uh, disappearing at the horizon. Um, uh, we've seen something like that last year also, uh, where we had these Twitter accounts that were hacked. Uh, uh, Obama, John Biden, Elon Musk, uh, and all these giveaways I, I mentioned before. Uh, um, there is this uh, guy, uh, 18 years old in Florida, um, uh, Graham Ivan Clark, uh, and he was caught uh, with him two other um, scammers. Uh, the only thing they received from that worldwide, millions and millions of followers, is I believe 118 or 120 US dollars. Um, now they're go he's going to jail for three years and, and only because he pleaded guilty and he is still very young. Uh, otherwise he would have gone to jail for a longer time. Um, so uh, scamming in crypto, um, you've got an, an, an increasing chance of being caught and, and all the anonymity which uh, all people brag about, it's less anonymous than you think. Okay, that was um, the, the part about uh, the, the general news. I, um, I don't see any questions yet. Maybe uh, uh, the audience is a little bit shy today. No problem. Um, if you have any questions, there will be Q&A sessions uh, later on also. So. Let me go over to our next segment uh, where um, Ali Amin Reze uh, is going to uh, talk to you about the use case that uh, Oldenburg uh, is building for Bling and um, he will introduce it himself. Uh, uh, Ali, uh, uh, would you please start? Hello everyone, my name is Ali Amin Reze. Uh, I'm leaving in Germany since six years, but originally coming from Iran. Uh, by the way, uh, on Sunday is the Iranian New Year. This presentation is about the Oldenburg University use case called Prestutz Protection Act. This project is running currently uh, in the context of Blink project. Probably many of you knows about the Blink but if you don't, BLING stands for Blockchain in Government, and the aim of the project is to investigate the role of the blockchain in government and public sector. I'm doing the project under the supervision of Professor Jorge Max Gomez in Oldenburg University. If you are interested to find more about BLING, you can find the link here. Since 2017, uh, prostitutes Protection Act is in effect in Germany. According to this law, prostitutes must register and do regular checkups. They must be over 18 years old to register. And uh, if they are over 20 years old, they have to check up, uh, check up every, uh, every year and if they are between 18 and 21 years old, every six months, they have to check up. But what is the problem? Uh, the problem is that uh, according to the officials in municipality, uh, currently the certificates are in paper form and thus can be faked. So we want to ensure about the source and integrity of the certificate. But more importantly is to address the privacy of the prostitutes as well, because research shows that um, 
many of the prostitutes are unwilling to register officially because they're afraid about their data they they give out and uh, they don't know what happened to their data so our solution should ensure their security as well their privacy and security of course as well and uh, since the process is moving from places to places the um, solution should be expandable as well so the main objectives in this uh, scenario is to address the integrity of the certificate. The source of the certificate means be verifiable, the origin of the certificate. And yeah, ensuring the privacy. To address those objectives, we need a fabric of trust, which is common between players. The self-sovereign identity model by using blockchain as an immutable ledger potentially can provide that trust layer. In this model, there are three roles, issuer of the claim, holder, and verifier. Every of these roles has a unique identifier, UID code, on the blockchain, which can be verified. Issuer issues the certificate and sign it with its private key. And, and since issuer has a unique ID on blockchain, the holder makes sure the certificate is uh, definitely coming from the issuer. The holder receives a signed certificate and countersign it and uh, store it locally. Therefore, the holder can impose full control over the access to the certificate, to the actual certificate. The verifier then can find the both UIDs of the issuer and holder on the blockchain and verify the authenticity of the certificate as well. Um, but there are many blockchains, but m mostly they can be categorized into category of uh, public and private blockchain. But each of them has its own limitation. Uh, ideal for our use case is that um, that's that's the that's uh, it, it, the solution be open to the public and be decentralized. Public blockchain has these two characteristics, but it's slow and it involves transaction fee because of the proof of work. Um, but private blockchain, on the other hand, is fast and involves no fee, but the problem is that private and uh, it's, uh, it's, and it's not de completely decentralized. So we can just put aside directly the private blockchain and think about public blockchain, but since we have a better option uh, as IOTA that can address uh, the goodness of both worlds. IOTA is a distributed ledger based on DAG, Directed Asset Click uh, Graph. Since IOTA, in IOTA every transaction can validate two other transactions, then there is no cost involved with proof of work. So IOTA transaction is fee-less. So that should be ideal for our case. And uh, IOTA is fast because it's expandable. Uh, to whatever more transaction happens, the, so to say, the bandwidth increases and uh, the validity, validation of transactions happen faster. And it's quantum proof. So an overview of how might be this uh, dimensioned roles on IOTA's network. The issuer and holder uh, needs to have a unique identifier, which is a seed on IOTA network. I will explain the details later. And the verifier can verify them. 
So the overview of the scenario is like that. The prostitute goes to the issuer, in our case, uh, registration office, scan the QR code, and receive the actual certificate and store it in her app locally. And when the prostitute wants to prove the validity of her certificate, just share those information that she will with the verifier. And verifier can scan the QR code again and uh, along seeing the photo of the prostitute, if that person uh, representing the photo is the actual person, then can verify it on the Tangle, if the certificates are valid or not, on the IOTA network. Okay, here is uh, the diagram of what happens. And first step, first to register in person in registration office. Prostitute registers her representative photo into the app. So it means that the photo never leaves the phone of the prostitute. The app creates a hash of the photo. Then the registration office can receive the hash through scanning the QR code. Prostitute has to represent her identity document to the registration office and the registration office registers all the information including the hash of the photo and sign it with its private key. And to make make it more unpredictable as um, um, at a, uh, at a, a random generated number as well. Uh, so basically, at this point, the certificate is ready. The certificate we are talking is a JSON object of, uh, that includes all the information. And second step, Registration office has multi-branch channel. The JSON object hash will be registered into the Tangle under the channel address of the registration office. So at this point, the, um, the transaction, that certificate hash, the hash of the cer uh, certificate object is on the Tangle and can be fined. So, um, so, the second step, the prostitute receives the actual certificates via scanning the QR code from registration office server. Once the prostitute receives the actual certificate, the registration office deletes the certificate on their server permanently. In the first step, um, prostitute goes in person to doctor, the doctor for the checkup, and of course, and the um, doctor scan QR code and receives the address of the registration certificate. In this in this diagram, you see the blue object. Prostitute then can then just share just required information to the doctor via QR code scanning. So the fifth step, the doctor has the required information and also the address of the, uh, of, of the registration certificate on the Tangle. So the doctor is already authorized uh, on the multi-branch channel uh, of the health office uh, on the IOTA network to be a publisher and subscriber as well, and has a related keynote, thus to be able to publish 
public message, then uh, then the then doctor is able to publish the public message uh, as well on the channel of uh, re health office. The doctor creates a health certificate, then with the received information, basically create another object, a JSON object, the hash of the certificate will be stored on the Tangle. Um, yeah. And in this, uh, in the next step is the sixth step, the prostitutes scan the QR code on the doctor system and uh, receive the actual health certificate. Once that happens, doctor delete the certificate from the system. And at this point, Prostitutes has both certificates and ready to uh, and ready to be verified by the client. The client goes to Prostitutes and the Prostitutes um, create a QR code including showing her photo. Uh, all of them in the context of the app, of course. What a client receives from this uh, QR code is the address of the, uh, those transactions, those uh, certificate hashes on the Tangle. And therefore, can find it. And then find it, it means that uh, the prostitutes certificates are valid. So we mentioned that the prostitutes can customize that information that's uh, shared. So the trick is with uh, Mecca tree. For example, if a uh, prostitute received, uh, wants to share his, her uh, health certificate with the client, um, the only important thing for the client is that the expiry date and birth date. And uh, this solution should not reveal any other information. So the only thing that person needs to reveal is that uh, expiry date and birth date. These information processes provide um, to the in the plain text pro provided to the to the client. Then also this information of this block and the hash of this block. And then when provides all this information to the to client, the client can uh, calculate locally, first check if the ex certificate is expired with the today date, the actual date that he verified. And uh, also can check if the prostitute is really uh, 18 years old and and yeah and then after receiving that can uh, th that number can uh, calculating that uh, can, can find this transaction on the tangle how it would look like uh, the architecture, is a, uh, as, as we said, is based on this is based on IOTA stream architecture. So, in this case, the registration office creates a um, channel. Then each doctor can subscribe, and the related keyload associated with that subscription message that uh, for for each doctor. It means that. Um, that doctor from this point on can publish uh, tagged public data on the Tangle. 
on the tangle, better to say, on the channel of the health office. And uh, in case that the key of the doctor stolen or whatever happened with the key, then the registration office, by changing the key load, can uh, avoid any fraud, uh, possible fraud. So that was basically, um, yeah, this is the Oldenburg use case. Please uh, have a question if you have. Thank you for your attention. Hello, Ali. Welcome uh, to uh, uh, the Q and A of uh, of this uh, uh, meetup. Um, I see several questions uh, in the chat, um, so uh, uh, people want to know everything about your use case. Um, I'm I'm just going to uh, fire them to you, and you can answer them. Uh, the first question is uh, from uh, Jan Taco. Um, is there a publication about the use case, uh, already proof of concept? Is there already acceptation by authorities? Yeah, first of all, hello everyone. And um, uh, uh, do you an hear echo. me? Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. I'll, I'll, I don't know if there's an echo on the line or not. Uh, I don't think so. Go on. Okay. Um, yeah, we have a publication actually on uh, 28. Uh, uh, there, there is ICBCT conference in Shanghai, and uh, we already uh, published a paper and accepted, and we are going to uh, present it on 28 uh, the, for the ICBCT conference. Um, but the point is that the previous publication. Uh, when we started, we focused on uh, IOTA uh, MAM, and uh, the solution that we presented was was on, on, uh, based on IOTA MAM architecture. But um, now, since IOTA moved to IOTA stream completely, and the MAM is almost dead, so we have to move as well. So that's the next iteration of the, the of the first pu publication, and we are going to publish at the moment. It's uh, in develop, uh, developing phase, and um, yeah, when we have the first prototype, we're going to have another publication with uh, all the information, related information. Okay, I think uh, that also answers the question of, uh, of Jeroen. Eh? Uh, is there already an app, a prototype, and is, has it been tested? Y you're building, right? And, yeah, uh, we're building it right now. Streams can do everything that MAM can do and more, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, you, you're going to get even better uh, with that. Yeah, hope so. Um, uh, Jan Taco uh, uh, said, "Well, it's it's a little bit uh, difficult to understand the timeline. Um, maybe um, I can make a, a small summary, uh, and and you, uh, Ali, you can uh, um, just jump in when I'm, uh, I'm I'm doing something wrong, right? So the the, the prostitute uh, takes a picture on her phone." Of herself, a selfie, right? And um, uh, that is um, because there is no personal information. Uh, uh, you you don't show uh, the, your your driver's license to a customer, so to speak, right? And you need something to identify you. I, I, I can put on the screen that this is uh, Mr. or uh, Mrs. Uh, Jones, but uh, when there is no picture, you don't know if that the person is real. So they take a selfie. They go to the, the city hall to the municipality, they present that information and they check that information together with their driver's license or whatever and make a certificate on the tangle, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. okay, then the next step is she scans the QR code in the municipality and then she has the certificate in her phone and the municipality throws it away. Okay, then yeah. she goes to the doctor and the, the doctor gives her a health check um, uh, and when the health check is done, he wants to give her the certificate. So she shows her phone with her picture and her QR code and he scans the QR code and registers the certificate in her name on the tangle. Yes? 
yeah. still correct. Under, un, uh, under, under the channel of the health, uh, um, health uh, authorization. Health, yeah. health authorization, right. Yeah, so, so there are two, uh, two streams. There's the stream of the municipality uh, 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 being the authority on checking their identity. And there's the stream of the health organization checking their health. And the doctor is authorized uh, as a subscriber to that channel. And as a, a subscriber to that channel, uh, uh, the doctor, the, the health office channel uh, issue as a keynote to the doctor. That the doctor can also publish a public data on, on, on that channel. Yeah. So then uh, 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 Mr. or Mrs. A prostitute um, uh, goes to work. We will not describe that. Um, but there is a customer. Uh, and he or she wants, uh, or maybe uh, by law uh, in, in the future, has, has to check the identity and the health of uh, uh, the, the, the sex worker. And he does that by, uh, um, th with the phone of uh, the, the sex worker that has the picture and the QR code. And by scanning the QR code, the customer can see that the person is who he says he is and that he's healthy. Correct? Yeah, exactly. Just the customer basically uh, has to find those uh, transactions on the Tangle. If those transactions can be found on the Tangle, it means that the prostitute is valid and the both certificate is a valid certificate. And there are two things. The, the customer is not identified and not registered anywhere. Right, he's just looking at the certificate, so to speak. And he just, the, it, it doesn't, he doesn't need to even to be part of the IOTA network, just can query the IOTA network. And, and the sex worker uh, only has two hashes on the Tangle and no personal information. The personal information is on his or her phone. Exactly. And that's also uh, the question from uh, 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 Michel Drent. Uh, what is what if the phone is lost? How can he or she uh, rescan both QR codes if it's deleted by the issuers? Now, it, it's pr pretty simple, I think. If your phone is lost, you have to get a newer certificate. Yeah, right? that's the only way. Yeah, that's the only way, and and um, that is also a positive, not only a negative. That's also a positive because um, that is under, so to speak, GDPR law your right to be forgotten. If you demolish the phone, then there is no record of you anywhere. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's the way it is. Okay. And, and um, um, uh, I have uh, uh, another question. Um, how are these certificates? Um, um, are they, are they, um, do they expire? Is there a certain length to it or um, does uh, the the uh, uh, the doctor or the municipality have a, some other means to revoke them? Yeah, the doctor, um, the municipality, um, basically, if the certificate, uh, the, some someone misused the certificate, um, the municipality is. Um, because there is no way to trace the prostitute. There, there is no tracing point to trace a prostitute. It's um, almost impossible to, to trace that uh, specific prostitute. And, um, but since we follow that uh, structure on the municipality as well, that in case that they based on maybe maybe according to the law they can acquire the phone of the prostitutes and they found the registration number and then they can find find that uh, that that's on the, on the tank and then okay and then from that on they can change again the key load and uh, cut the access yeah. uh, and uh, what was the next question the doctor also. The doctor, uh, the, um, the, the most important thing is that the prostitute uh, is legally aged and also the, uh, the, uh, the validity of the health certificate. So the doctor um, issued that certificate, that, that's part, 
that, that state, and then the prostitutes transfer that state in a plain text to the to the customer. That calculation happens in the hand in the app of the uh, customer and uh, check if a steal is valid or not. And if uh, the first check uh, is positive, then goes to the tangle and check if the prostitute is really the certificate registered on the tangle or not. And if both uh, uh, query get a positive uh, reply, it means that the certificate is valid. Yeah, and, and the picture with the Merkle tree, right? Um, uh, uh, somebody wrote that that's a, a little bit difficult, uh, but that's only there because uh, the, the sex worker uh, uh, by his or her, herself can say, okay, I want to share my first name and uh, my, the city where I live and, and the rest I don't want to share, or I just want to share uh, the city and nothing else and, and my picture. But she can, he or she can just uh, uh, select the things they want to share and through that Merkle tree, uh, then uh, that information is checked. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great. Uh, Jan Taco uh, uh, asks, uh, please, more information about the Congress you mentioned. The Congress where you're, Congress where are you speaking? Uh, the Congress? Well, uh, the, the, Congress? The, 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 you mentioned the conference or a... Uh, oh, uh, conference. Oh, yeah, con a conference. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned uh, that's the uh, conference in Shanghai in, uh, um, that takes place uh, in 28th of this month. And uh, ICBCT Shine uh, conference, and uh, um, then there, um, then it would be published in the ACM paper uh, journal as well. And okay. um, yeah, and then we presented also that, but with the with the MAM architecture, but um, yeah, and it's accepted. Okay. It's right. basically the same almost, but um, we give a little bit of uh, change uh, onto, to, to match it with this key load structure of the streaming. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. Um, I don't see any other questions about this topic. So um, I'm going to switch to the next speaker. Um, uh, Danny Dreves uh, will talk about um, uh, developing in IOTA. He has a, a, a small demonstration. Then we show um, uh, some information about our uh, self-sovereign attendancy app, first our animation film, and then uh, Danny will show uh, some um, uh, hands-on uh, use of the proof of concept. Let's switch to Danny. Okay. Hello, my name is Danny. I'm part of the Blockchain Lab Trenthe, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about IOTA development. I'm going to start with the introduction then I'm going to show you a short overview of the playing field and using IOTA. I'm going to give you a small demo uh, with the tools uh, you use. And I'm going to show you a, uh, the current status of our application we are building in the Blockchain Lab Drenthe. IOTA Tangle is an open, fearless and scalable distributed ledger. Um, the Tangle is IOTA's network. It immutably records the exchange of data and value. Uh, the tangle, it means actually an untidy mass of things that are not in state of order or state of confusion or difficulty. Who is IOTA for? Anyone who does not trust centralized networks, anyone who values security, anyone who wants the freedom to transact. Well, that sounds nice. Basically, the IOTA network, uh, the core is that transactions are checked by uh, the following transactions in the tree. That means that transaction two uh, verifies transaction zero. Transaction four verifies two, one and zero and is verified by 10, 11 and nine. And transaction five verifies one and zero and is uh, equally trans, uh, checked by 12 and eight. So that way the transactions check themselves. Uh, the playing field for the IOTA uh, architecture involves uh, the nodes, uh, it involves the tangle, and it involves clients uh, that are users or applications that use the network. When you are going to uh, develop on IOTA, you, uh, have, uh, you need uh, a couple of tools, JavaScript, Node.js, uh, 
I'm going to have to uh, use an editor, for instance Visual Studio, but that's it. So, let's start with uh, the development uh, process. Uh, you start with uh, npm init, then you use npm to get IOTA libraries, then you're going to create a little bit of code. Um, in this code we're going to write a hello world transaction, we're going to run the code, and then we're going to look up the transaction on the IOTA explorer. So, let's take a look at uh, these uh, things. So we start with making a directory, for instance, uh, iota hello world, iota hw, we're going to call npm init, um, that uh, kicks off uh, the complete process of uh, creating uh, the application. Uh, next part is we're going to include the iota libraries with the uh, ampersand iota slash core and converter. Uh, when these uh, libraries are installed, um, we're going to uh, take a little bit of code, which is on the right-hand side of the screen. In this code, I'm going to write a transaction with the text Hello World into the IOTA Tangle. Um, and then you can run it with Node and then the file you just created, index.js. That results in a, uh, a link with a uh, uh, hash explorer. And you can look it up on the IOTA Tangle. And uh, as we can see, it has just been created, the transaction, and in the transaction, the message Hello World is there. Sometimes, attendees need to prove to verifiers that they attended an event, course, or conference. For example, for accreditation of medical personnel, accountants, financial specialists, students, and everyone who must prove personal education points. Event organizers like to use attendance sheets or pictures to register attendancy. GDPR law makes these sheets hard to use. Blockchain Lab researched how to make registration GDPR proof. Is it possible to show tamper-free proof of attendancy? Can verifiers trust the attendee? Can verifiers be sure that the attendees listed were really at the event and worked out a solution? How our blockchain solution works. Decentralized, transparent, immutable, and cryptographically safe sharing of data on a need-to-know basis. Step one. Event organizer, Isaac, registers an event on the blockchain and creates a unique event key. Step 2. A. The phone of the attendee, Harry, picks up the Bluetooth key at the event or the QR code for an online event. B. Generates a unique key. C. Uses it to access the blockchain. D. Register and store a certificate locally on Harry's phone. Step 3. The organizer closes the event to prevent misuse. Step 4. With the event wallet on his phone, Harry is able to verify 24-7 that he was present at a certain event, date, time, location without revealing his identity details. Step 5. The verifier, Victor, can test the validity of event attendancy on the blockchain without having access to attendee Harry's identity details a blockchain solution with maximum transparency while retaining maximum privacy. Hello, this presentation shows the progress for the implementation of the self-software attendancy application built by Blockchain Labyrinth. Our guidelines and goals are, we want to use open source when possible, we want to use open standards like Git, OAuth, OpenSSL, JSON, and REST. We want to use the application as a learning opportunity, playground. We build our mobile application with React like Native because of access to native features of the phone like CPU storage and uh, radio like Bluetooth. Our server application is built with uh, Angular and is hosted on uh, Google Cloud. And of course, use the IOTA Tangle. All our code is available in GitLab and GitHub. 
important for collaboration. We have prepared a little demo. In this demo we create a new event with the host part of the application. We register as a attendant with the mobile app and then we'll check the registrations on the IOTA Tangle. Our roadmap is we want to move all hosting to Google Cloud, including uh, moving the app to the App Store and Play Store. We want to finish the MAM security and privacy aspect of the relation. We want to make reporting for the host of the event. We want to make reporting for the attendant of the event. And we want to collaborate. Thank you. This is the host part of SSA app. Currently, we host the app at the free Netlify platform. Um, the authentication is uh, built with uh, Pod Zero. Uh, I log in with my uh, previously created account. You can uh, sign up yourself if you want to. From there on, you can uh, see the currently created events, which are none. You can see your profile and most important, you can create a new event. It starts with a seed and a name, and then you press create, and the resulting uh, QR code represents the, the tag of the event, which can be used by the attendant later on. If you take a look at the event list, then you see the event. You can explore the event which is created on the IOTA Tangle. There you have it. And from there on, you can also display the QR code again, which can be used in the app later on. This is the demo of the application on the mobile phone. It starts with a scan of a code that is being presented by the host of the event. That's the same QR code I recently uh, created in the previous demo. Once it's scanned, the um, application uh, checks uh, if it's uh, there on the IOTA table. If it's there, it uh, calls transaction to uh, make the registration. And while uh, that's being performed, um, uh, the, the phone does the proof of work to make uh, IOTA uh, enabled to uh, write the transaction. If that's uh, successfully done, then you can view the transaction on uh, the IOTA Tangle with the uh, regular IOTA Explorer. Uh, we made uh, a shortcut application for this. And uh, in here you can see that uh, this attendant uh, just wrote uh, a tendency. Thank you. So now on to our uh, final part of the short demo. In here we will uh, go to the host part again and uh, check uh, our event. Um, when we uh, explore the event on the IOTA Tangle, we can see the original transaction which uh, created uh, the event. And then we can see uh, another transaction this is once again uh, the additional one with the creation of the event. And then we see another one uh, which is being created uh, just a few minutes ago and that contains the uh, actual attendance illustration. Thank you. Okay, um, so I hope this is, uh, made it a little bit uh, more um, uh, practical for you. I see uh, the first question. Jan Taco asks uh, the event from beginning to end. Um, how is this guaranteed for accreditation? Well, um, uh, at this moment, we are uh, looking into two ways uh, of um, uh, proving you are there. Uh, the first thing uh, is a, uh, a Bluetooth signal, right? The event organizer uh, registers the event and um, uh, then his phone turns into a Bluetooth beacon. And everybody in the room with the same app can uh, receive the, the signal from the beacon, uh, which contains a, a secret, so to speak, a key where you can find the information of this event on, uh, on the Tangle. Uh, so uh, when you receive that information, um, then you um, uh, can search the Tangle for uh, that event information, then you can uh, answer a question on your screen. Do you want to incorporate this event into your wallet? 
and you say yes and, uh, and when that happens some hash from your private information is stored at the event so a verifier later on can verify if that information is really on the stream of the organizer now um, that is the bluetooth beacon we can also do that with a qr code like um, uh, danny just showed right then you can have a slide somewhere in your deck and um, uh, that that you can scan with your phone um, and at the moment we're, uh, we're doing that once on an event but you could do that several times on an event right so um, uh, I don't know if you can uh, remember a, a few years ago there were these uh, members of European Parliament that uh, went to Brussels, clocked in, received 390 euros and went home, right? Um, uh, we want to prevent something like that so you could really uh, make it a, a, a slide 2 or a slide 10 or you could make it something unexpected, right? But where you uh, show the QR code um, or the same with the, the Bluetooth beacon. Uh, it is only present uh, at, a, at a certain unsuspected uh, uh, time. And then the people have 10 minutes or something uh, to register. But you could uh, do also do that uh, uh, several times a day at, at the start and at the end, for instance. And only when you have both, then uh, you have a certificate uh, that you attended that uh, conference or course or, uh, or whatever. Um, is it already in action? Nope, we're building it. And uh, uh, we, we still have uh, a little bit of uh, work to do also with the transition to Chrysalis. Uh, so uh, it'll take a, a, a few months uh, before we can show it uh, and give it uh, to somebody to start uh, using it and do a test in a small group, for instance. But there has already been um, um, uh, uh, several questions, uh, uh, even from the IOTA community itself, where uh, people say, well, um, we want to check if somebody did the basic course uh, before he can go to the intermediate or the, uh, some higher course, and we would like to use that very much. So um, uh, that, that is um, uh, in, in the works, and uh, there are several parties uh, looking forward to, uh, to get their hands on it. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Um, uh, Danny mentioned uh, our, our Git. Uh, the, the code uh, will uh, uh, go onto Git. Uh, it is not there yet, but um, uh, the, there is um, uh, a, a delay of a, a few weeks or something. That if you want to cooperate with us, check in and uh, we'll see uh, how we can uh, fit you in. Um, Michel asks a question, how do you prevent people from uh, taking pictures of the QR? That's uh, 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 a, a good question. Uh, the, the, the Bluetooth signal is very hard to, um, uh, to send it somewhere else, right? And, and uh, the QR code is easier to send it somewhere else, but you have uh, just a limited time to register. So the shorter the time, uh, uh, the uh, harder it will be to copy it to somebody else. Uh, we have been looking into other ways. Uh, for instance, not only uh, at, at a physical event, uh, that, that's what we're talking about, not only uh, uh, putting uh, in the hash the QR code or the, the signal from the Bluetooth, but also, for instance, storing the SSID of locally present Wi-Fi hotspots. So when then uh, uh, the organizer uh, registers the event um, th and uh, uh, just before the phone starts transmitting uh, the Bluetooth signal, it scans for hotspot and not only the, the signal from the Bluetooth beacon, but also the SSIDs from the hotspots are incorporated in the hash and then you really have to be present. If you would send that signal to somebody which is not present at the same location, that it wouldn't fit. Um, uh, are we making it based on the IOTA stream? Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, we are also in the transition from uh, uh, changing it from MAM to streams. Okay, I have, uh, let me see, other questions. No, I don't see any other questions. Um, 
yeah it's it's, it's very important uh, that that timestamp um let me uh, uh iterate it a, a, a little bit more when you use a qr code then you always will have a small window until the event organizer closes the registration right but in that way you could also put the qr code in a youtube movie i could make a course show the qr code and only those who are present at the live event yeah, would get an accreditation um, because at the live event i show the qr code then after 10 minutes on my phone i close the event and even if you would uh, watch that movie the next day, you could scan the QR code, but you would not be able to register anymore. Right, so the time window is very important. Um, any other questions? I uh, see that um, Denny is also answering uh, several questions. So I don't see any others. No, okay, now then, um, let me go on. There are a few things uh, that I can do right now. I get a signal. Uh, uh, we will post the information. Uh, I have some documents from uh, Ali uh, where he describes his use case, uh, a, a PDF, and I will uh, post that in, this, in the description. And uh, I will also post some information about our Git uh in the description uh, also i don't know if i'm gonna manage uh, this evening but uh, uh, uh for sure tomorrow uh so you can have a look at the the papers uh of ali and uh, our uh, our code okay um then i must thank uh, ali and denny for uh, uh, their presentations um, uh, it was very nice to have uh, uh, a look under the hood of uh, use cases. Uh, to most people, blockchain is very abstract. It's something far, far away, which happens in the cloud, etc. But in this way, they, they uh, opened up the hood and they showed us how it really works. And still then, even then, it's very hard to, to grab every aspect, uh, right? You can, you can write a book about the use case uh, of Oldenburg and also about our use case and still not have everything in it. So uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Denny and Ali. Um, I want to uh, uh, tell you about our next meetup, which will be April 20th. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the third Thursday of the month. And um, uh, here you see also the address of the Yitzi uh, uh, meeting. We have an informal meeting after this live stream where everybody can talk to each other. If you want to join us, please use this uh, URL, meet.yit.c and then BCLD, which stands for Blockchain Lab Drinte, BCLD Meetup. Um, I will uh, uh, go there too. It'll take me uh, uh, five to 10 minutes to switch over to uh, from the stream to uh, the, the meet, uh, uh, the Yitzi meet, but uh, uh, be free to, uh, to go, go there and, uh, and we'll have a chat. Do me a favor before that, uh, press subscribe and like, etc. I'm, I'm sounding like a real YouTuber, but it will help us uh, to, be, uh, uh, to, to get higher in the ranking of YouTube. Uh, if we have 100 subscribers, then we can have our own uh, blockchain lab Drenthe URL. And, um, and if you like it, uh, then, then there'll be a, a better ranking for us. So um, if there are no other questions, um, uh, then uh, I will close the stream and I will see you in uh, a few minutes uh, in, uh, in Yitzi. Yeah. Thank you very much.